him in touch till it matters. 15 kilometers to go for the leaders of the Tour de France after nearly three weeks of racing. Just by the way, Phil, over the summit of the Col de la Poitrie, Nieve hung on to get himself a single point. So he's up into third place in that competition, overtaking uh, Quintana. Well, Chris Froome keeps his lead. He keeps his lead uh, for the end of the day, yes. To take it into the final day tomorrow. Now, this is Rojas, who was in the breakaway earlier on, and all of a sudden, he was just going to ride to the finish, but he's seen a change in the race tactics. Oh, this is my team leader, Alejandro Valverde, and all of a sudden, he finds a little bit more energy to give a little bit of a helping hand to his team leader. If he's got just 10% of his energy left, he'll use it all there to give him a little break before he'll drop off. One minute back to Andreas Klerden, who's on his own now, by the way. Jan Bekelans is dropped by half a minute behind him. They've all split up. 8.58 are coming in very slowly. Valverde and Gadre, the peloton of the yellow jersey. Nine minutes and 16 seconds. Rui Costa of Portugal and the Spanish Movistar team is taking this race down to the Grand Bournon. And Andreas Cloden now onto the drier roads on the outskirts of the ski resort of La Clusa. It's pretty much all downhill to the finish, although pretty nasty of the organisers. It kicks up the last uh, 200 metres here to the finishing line. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Don't think that'll make too much difference to the winner today. If he keeps the lead he's got now. He's holding one minute on Andreas Cloden, who knows this town very well indeed. Clerton leading his Radio Shack team. There's a chance they could be the team leaders if things go well today for them. One minute, one thirty. Back uh, to a group of De Klerk, Bakerlands, Nieva, and uh, Navarro. Navarro making the big kill. Started the day 19 minutes behind Chris Froome, and at the moment he's about seven minutes ahead of him. 38 years of age, uh, Andreas Clerden, and. Uh... He's taking uh, some serious risks on the descent. These are the remnants of... Oh, well, that's, that's uh, Valverde just a little bit further up. So they're actually starting to pull back Alejandro Valverde. Igor Anton is the rider with 1-1-1 in his back. Uh, just hanging on at the moment. He's a good climber as well. Bryce Fellu, number 211, the leader of uh, Soyosun. He is slipping backwards. He was in the breakaway for a lot of the day this afternoon. But again, for him, this was one hill too far. We're in La Clusa now. The crowd don't care it's raining, they're watching the Tour de France. Rui Costa doesn't care that it's raining either because he's got a 50 sec 58 second advantage over Andreas Clodi. One minute 30 back to the group containing his teammate Jan Bacalan and still 9.15 back to the main field. I have to say, Navarro, Daniel Whoop. Navarro, this is Rodriguez. Job. Now they see, uh, and the Contador saw him coming. This is the re reaction. This is the fight now. The 47 second men. These are second, third, and fourth in the Tour de France. They can't let anybody out of the sight. They've reacted. Well, they're uh, separated from uh, second place down to fifth place by just four, fifth, 47 seconds, and that's why this move is coming. But Chris Froome has responded very quickly to get onto the back of that grap. He doesn't want to let anybody grapple any seconds back at all. Desperate moments. John Gadre has been caught with Alessandro Valverde because uh, now it's uh, Purito Rodriguez who's made a move here. This is his favourite terrain when he makes late runs on steep climbs. At the moment, it looks as though it's put Richie Port in trouble now, but it's OK for the yellow. He's still up there. Well, he's only just up there. He's under a little bit of pressure just at the back of that group time to get onto the wheel of Quintana and Gadre, but he's done it. So, Richie Port in more than a spot of bother here now, but his team captain has made the split. If we go under five kilometres to go for Rui Costa, he's still on wet roads, but not quite as bad as the race uh, uh, yellow jersey is back there. Well, he's got a very safe buffer now, Phil. He's got a minute over this man chasing him in second position on the road, Andreas Cloden. Cloden uh, also may well be riding his team into first place in the team competition this afternoon. Valverde is trying to really rip this race apart. I'm trying to see whether I can see the yellow jersey of Chris Froome still on the back of this group. Froome doesn't have to worry too much, but what Valverde is trying to do is try and crack Alberto Contador. And look at this, Paul. Richie Damage. Port coming back as best he can. Yep. He will never give up. Now, the last, this is Quintana now as they come up to the summit of the climb trying to accelerate. Quintana was started a day, a third overall in the Tour, Tour de France, 21 seconds behind Alberto Contador. Contador jumps onto his wheel. Uh, Rodriguez is here. He started the day just 14 uh, 
seconds behind the rider in front of him, Kreuzinger. 47 seconds covers the boys. They're all hooked up together. Well, Valverde comes straight to the front once more and says, "Right, well, what can I do here? What can I take to do? To, what can I do to take advantage That's of Valverde this?" Valverde gone again. Yep, straight over the top. And now it's uh, Quintana, Contador, and Froome, with, with Rodriguez just in front. Well, the one missing here is Kreuzinger at the moment, and he is losing his place overall if he doesn't come back up to Alberto Contador. As we start now descending onto uh, just very slightly damp roads here, it's amazing, but as he comes in towards the finish, it's pretty dark, but the roads are not wet yet, and uh, De Costa is going in now for sure to win this stage. What a great victory, topping and tailing the Alps at the moment, winning our first visit in the other day. Three kilometres to go for Rui Costa. Valverde as well, Phil, what a fighter, that man uh, from uh, Movistar, uh, he was... Uh, Second overall, well, this is the Saint Jean de Six. By the way, you turn right here. Yeah, I'll tell you, it was a tricky old bend, that one. Three kilometres to go. I was just starting to say about Alejandro Valverde, second in the overall standings as we went into the stage of saint amand Moron and caught out in the crosswinds when he had a mechanical incident at the wrong possible time, lost everything, plummeting from second to 15th overall, but he's remained combative, he's remained aggressive in this race, and so too has his team. They've been up for the fight. We are on the descent here. This is the rider momentarily in second place. He's been there for a while now, but he's losing ground to Costa. He's now, uh, well, he's not losing ground. He's exactly one minute and he's not moved. And 8.51 back to Valverde. And the rain is still with the race at the back. Well, those white motorbikes you can see uh, every now and again with AG2R on them. They're not team cars from AG or team motorbikes for AG2R. They're actually the race radio that give the information of the numbers of the riders who get into the breakaway. And a quick acceleration there into that corner by Chris Froome. Two kilometres to go for Rui Costa. He's trying to win the stage, his second stage when he won into gap. I don't think there's any doubt about now. The only thing that will take him out will be an accident. We don't wish that on him. He's on slightly damp roads. He's driven too far ahead now. He's being chased by Andreas Claude a minute behind. Then we've got the rest of the riders. He's sweeped to the right. He's heading into the Grand Bornard. And the riders uh, who are challenging for the yellow jersey are all ganging up around Chris Froome, but they look to be coming home together. Costa just looks over his shoulder. He wants to know if uh, he has to keep riding hard like this. But I tell you what, mate, it's about a kilometre behind you if you want to look back and see the rider who's chasing, because that's yeah. where Cloden is currently. Yes, 58 seconds, they're saying now. As he continues, he's clear to run to the finish. It'll be at least 800 to 900 metres back to Andreas Cloden. This is Richie Port, who has dropped on the uphill, now trying to get back to his team captain, Froome. One kilometre to go. This now is for uh, Roy Costa. He's into the last thousand metres, and he's done exactly what he did on the run into gap, except the weather is slightly different. He's lining himself up for his third stage victory in the Tour de France after the one he got a couple of years ago on the summit finish at Super Bess. He wants to have a quick chat with the team management. Thank you very much. Well done. He's pulled it off again. He's reversing the fortunes of Movistar that lost everything in the crosswinds uh, 10 days ago. And now he's putting up a second stage win for them here. Yes, uh, wait for the final little kick up to the line as he comes closer to the finish here. The Grand Bornau has seen some dramatic finishes, but I think the dramatic images of the rainstorm these riders have just been through will be remembered for quite some time to come. Well, he's going to be applauded all the way when he gets inside. Here he comes on the way to the line. He's uh, waiting to smile. He punches it almost identically as to when he rode up the Avenue Foch in Gap to salute the crowd there. He punches the air. Win number two for Portugal. His third in the Tour de France in history. It was not an easy victory. He'd been in the lead with groups of riders from the gun today. He survived the best. Just looking back, I can't believe that he's got a clear piece of road behind him. Just making sure before he salutes the crowd, Valverde wasn't sleeping in in the shadow of the crowd. Roy Costa gets the victory.